Hello, everybody. This is Chris from CSS Tricks with video screencast number 21, where we're going to be talking about contact forms. Uh, if you've been following along on the blog, you know I did a kind of lengthy tutorial recently on a contact form where I started out in Photoshop and designed the whole thing and then built the whole thing from scratch and added some functionality. So uh, this is going to be kind of a, a walkthrough of that and just kind of me just talking about how I feel about contact forms. This is the contact form in question that we're looking at. It's kind of this big speech bubble thing with some functionality and some rollovers and it works and validates and does all kinds of stuff. And you might think to yourself right away, why are you designing a contact form? Isn't that kind of reinventing the wheel as far as working on the web is concerned? And yes, I do feel that way. You know, why bother creating a brand new contact form that's done? It's been done literally thousands of times in thousands of different ways and thousands of different styles. It is absolutely reinventing the wheel as far as the web is concerned. If you go out there and Google something like free web contact form or web forms or anything, there's all kinds of services. Some of them I even really, really like. You'll know that um, a lot of times I mention WooFoo on the blog because I just think WooFoo is a really awesome online form web builder, which I'm going to talk about in a future episode in more detail. But you'll end up with something like this, freecontactform.com, woo, demos, and the forms, you know, they look like this. This isn't bad. It does. It's fine. It works. It's functional. It's not very nice looking, but that's the kind of thing that you see all over on the web. And that's just kind of what we are trained to expect is that this is what a web form is. You know, you can control position a little bit, but, you know, web forms are web forms. They're ugly. They're functional, but they work, whatever. I want to kind of break us out of that mold and think that no, web forms don't have to look like this. They can look however you want them to look. They are just HTML elements, and there's uh, little hooks here and there that uh, can make styling forms a little more difficult, but really it's not that big of a deal. Uh, little quirks can be worked around, and you can design, just like you can do anything with CSS design, you can make any design work uh, with, with CSS and, and HTML. You can do anything you want with a form, too. I'm fairly certain of that. So let's get rid of that and go and look at our contact form again. Uh, it has some extra functionality. It's, the, well, you know, first of all, design-wise, it's, uh, you know, it's a big contact bubble. These these don't exactly look like your everyday form elements and, you know, with their drop shadows and whatnot. And the send button certainly isn't a default send button. And this whole layout really is kind of unusual. I kind of wanted to start this out though by saying that, that uh, the contact form for a web designer and a web developer is a little bit like the hello world application for for programmers. You know like in basic or if you're a C programmer, a Java programmer, or whatever, a lot of times the first project you ever do in there is hello world and it's some kind of thing where you can get hello world to print on your screen or pop open a window that says hello world and we've all done it before probably in grade school or whatever um, it's not so much that that program does anything of value it's not interesting in that way it's more symbolic of the fact that your computer is set up properly it's working properly you have the right software installed you you have a proper working environment and you're able to write some code to get it done to and then when you run it it, it does what it's supposed to do so that's like your first step on a journey of programming and a contact form is albeit it's much more involved in that there's more going on here but it's a bit like that it's symbolic of I know how to as a web designer it's I can design a form and put elements on a page that are form elements and and design and control them so it's just symbolic that you are able to do that you know even if it's just a contact form who knows in your web design career you will certainly be dealing with forms at some point so it's kind of if you can control it now you you know you have that control and then there's, uh, you know, from the web development angle, it's symbolic of the Hello World program because it's like you took those elements and you processed them in some way and you did something with them. You know, you created an email and it works. And, you know, step one on your journey of being a bigger, tougher, badass web developer. So that's where we are. We're going to kind of look at some of the code. We're not going to build this thing from scratch because there's just 
too much to go from step one to step finished here. I don't think it really deserves a series, but what we're going to do is walk through some of the code, look at it, look at some of the functionality, and just, like I said, just kind of talk about contact forms a bit. So hopefully that's useful. So the first thing we're going to do here is let's just explore how this thing looks, feels, works, functions, that type of stuff. Like we were seeing earlier when I mouse over some of these areas, they turn this from white to this lighter tan color, which is going to be something we kind of did with like a CSS sprites kind of thing, which you'll see in a little bit. That is, you know, it's just, it's nice aesthetically because you can just kind of see it's nice to have some visual feedback of where you're mousing around, just like navigation or anything else. And it's also nice, you know, just from a, yeah, you know, I know I'm on name. You know, I can even tab to the different fields and, and it retains that thing. So it's it's a little bit usability related to, I don't know about accessibility, but usability for sure. And it's some other functionality here is, you know, I can type in here. That's great. Um, if I hit the send button, though. Uh, it does a little what's called client-side validation, which means that before this thing even hits the server level, it's going to look at these fields and give any feedback of those fields. So let's just go ahead and hit the send button, and you'll see some red text popping up in the classic error kind of font here. Uh, uh, this field is required, this field is required, this field is required. So just to save a little burden on our servers and per perhaps even prevent a little spam, it's, it's doing some client-side validation of these forms, saying you can't leave that field blank. You have to type something in there. So let's say if I'm just lazy and I'm like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll, put a, I'll put an A there, you'll see that it's doing some extra validation there and saying, no, your name isn't just one character. It's got to be at least two characters. So let's fill this thing out for real this time. If I enter Chris and tab away, that error goes away. So that's great. City, same deal. Uh, just one letter is not going to cut it. So... I'll put Portland in there, and then email address. I also, I can't just go like that. It doesn't have an at symbol in it or a dot, so it can't possibly be an email. So let's put my real email address in there. Like I said, that's just good form on any contact form. And you can see those things happened uh, kind of Ajax style. Yeah, I didn't have to hit this, um, the send button or any do any page refreshes to get those messages. That's all happening with a nice little jQuery plugin. And we'll just type a message that says, hi, Chris, exclamation point, and hit send and watch this thing do its magic. Thanks for submitting the contact form. So we get a little extra usability. We get some feedback that that thing was actually sent. Makes me feel all warm and fuzzy inside to know that that message was actually sent. Uh, I can't fake an error, but just in case there was an error, who knows what happens on servers some days. There's an error page all worked up for this that says, uh-oh, something went wrong. So I would know then if something, if the server returned some kind of error and something went wrong, that I got some feedback that says I didn't get that message, so don't rely on that message being sent to that person. Good to have feedback that way, too. So that's with how the form looks and operates. And now let's look at the code a little bit. So this is the folder, the project directory. Sometimes I kind of take that for granted when I'm doing these tutorials and writing things is that all these project examples and tutorials I do, they have a folder and that's where they live, whether it's locally on your machine or on a server. But I have a folder called contact form and that's where all the files for this project reside. So right at the top here is the Photoshop file. I wasn't uh, yanking your chain or anything. This is, um, you can see it's shrunk down a little bit, but is that not exactly pretty much what it looks like on the web? That's how I dreamed this thing up and then and then just made it happen on the web. So uh, this thing uh, started its life as a Photoshop file, and we were able to kind of fully realize that vision uh, in code. So that's pretty cool. Uh, not much to see here, really. You can see that maybe these fonts are a little different uh, on the web because this is something that's not really a web font or whatever. But, you know, it's a large background image and whatever. I'll close that up so you can kind of see how I began cutting these things up. Like the send button's pretty straightforward. I just cropped around that thing and cut it out. And uh, the page background is just a little slice of the background. You, I'm sure you're familiar with that, with that texture. I use it all the time. And the background for the whole thing is, is, is everything. So no mystery there. Things we just place inside of it. The things a little more interesting are the, like the form backgrounds are doubled up. That's kind of the CSS sprites technique where uh, 
it's normally showing this the bottom version, but on a rollover or when this active class gets applied, which we do with jQuery a little bit on occasion for the tabbing through and things like that, we switch the background position to top instead of bottom, and it shows, and that's how we kind of achieve that that rollover highlight. And we had to have a different image for the message too, but it's the same same theory there. So I took that Photoshop file and just cut those pieces out of it. That's you know normally how that works out. And then there's all these files. There's uh, uh, basically five files that kind of make this thing run. The heart of it being the index HTML file uh, that that renders the page and makes it look how it looks. So let's take a look at that. Typical stuff, as always, in the head section, we declare a contact type. We have a page title. We link out to our our, our CSS file. In this thing, the, the validation and the highlighting of those forms are all dependent on jQuery, as I'm just a fan of jQuery, and I've been writing that stuff lately. So these are two includes to the latest version of jQuery and the validator plugin, which you can get a link to. I'll kind of show you that later. And then some custom jQuery stuff, which uh, kind of maybe looks complicated. It's really not. It's just like when you roll over this, apply the active class when you mo mouse out, Excuse me, when you mouse out of it, remove that class. Likewise, when it comes into focus, do the same thing. So that looks complicated. It's really not. And then a one-liner to validate. Very slick. You just say, on the form with an ID of comment form, validate. And it, it takes care of all that stuff. It looks for some classes down here, which I'll show you. So there's a page wrap to keep things centered like we always use. And then the meat of the form is is all this. It looks a little bit maybe more complicated than a normal form. Uh, usually there's a field set in forms. I think the validator kind of looks for that. I'm not sure about that. That might be totally unnecessary, but there's a div to get our left-right structure going. So that's something you don't normally see in a form, but you can put divs inside of forms. There's nothing holding you back from doing that. But each each input generally has a label and an input, and that's not for, uh, you know, it's for usability because you can see that what, you know, email, put email here, that's how you label it. Don't use a paragraph element, you know, use a label because that's what labels are for. Literally label for name and it looks to match the ID. Now, why is that not in here? I think in the, in the, in the real version online, somebody called me on that and I, and I fixed it, but the for value in a label is looking for the ID value of the input so that in it, it's it's not only just you know for semantics and accessibility this allows it so you can actually click on the word name let me shoot over here and it'll activate that field you see all that I can click on city and it makes this the active field so that's a that's definitely a usability and accessibility thing uh, actually <clears throat> let's see what happens if we turn off the CSS entirely um, This is what happens there. That that field set provides this big line around it, so it kind of separates the form from the rest of the field. So I guess it's not totally useless. That was kind of nice. And then uh, each thing, each form is just lined up nice, and, and we still get our send button because that's actually right in the markup, not in the CSS. So actually with CSS turned off, this is a very accessible form as well. Let's turn that back on. How do I even do that? You can use Web Developer Toolbar for that, too. I'm actually using Firefox 3 now. How exciting is that, huh? actually switched over because Firebug is working for it, but that's a little aside. So we have some divs inside here. We have some, some divs around the inputs, which is what I'm using to fight against the, the default styling of an input. Uh... uh how I apply that little that box with the with the shadow around it. I'm applying that to the div that goes around the input instead of the input itself, which sometimes don't like to take background images. So it's better to wrap it in a div. So that's why this stuff might be looking a little bit more complicated than a regular form, but it's not that bad. It's just some extra hooks for the CSS to grab onto. And you know, more more of that stuff. Our 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 message area is actually a text area. And and the submit button is of type image instead of, of type submit. You can do it of type submit and even make a make your button show up with a by applying a background image in CSS. But 
just more cross browser dependable to make your input of type image and then link the source right there. That'll work in all browsers, no problem. And then because we did some floating left and right, we clear the float and the form. And that's the end of that. That junk at the end there is just for uh, traffic gathering. You don't have to pay attention to that. So uh, then you can quickly look at our, our, our thank you. It's the same exact thing, only there's just no form in there. It's just an H1 tag that says thanks. And I spelled submitting wrong. That's embarrassing. Uh, that's pretty cool, though, that, that when you're within tags like this in TextMate, it, it realizes this isn't code. This is text and applies the spell checker. I really like that feature. I'll save that. And the error is the same thing. Just two different pages that way. Um, as far as styling goes, uh, I'm not going to spend a ton of time, but uh, simple stuff like the page, the texture is applied to the whole page up here, and it's centered with the centering trick, and it's got the... Um, the background for the whole form is applied to the page wrap. We push the form down and into the box with a little uh, padding. That's top and left padding, CSS shorthand there. Um, we knock down those H1s into the middle of the box with top padding. This is just standard stuff here. Um, let me look at that. It's a little error. Um, this is the, the deal with that active stuff, of having jQuery apply that active class. Like I said, when it has that active class, it uses the same background, but it makes the, the position top instead of bottom. And that's the the sprite that goes since it has a static height here. Uh, you won't you only be able to see one of the two. And it has that nice rollover effect. So that's what's going on there. Uh, same thing with the message here. And our labels are blocks. You know they have a font size set up. You can style a label element just like you can style a paragraph element or a list item or anything else. Um. Yeah. Then our uh, one little thing I wanted to mention, though, is the divs that we use to wrap each input have relative positioning applied. There it is. Because within that, we, we're going to use some absolute positioning. This is a thing that you really need to wrap your head around with, with CSS, is when there's a box element, like a div, let's say you have a div with width and height applied to it, uh, and you apply relative positioning to that and then have another div inside of that, you can apply absolute positioning to the one inside it, the child, and it will it, it will never it, it will be absolutely positioned relatively inside of that parent element. So you can you know absolute positioning doesn't have to be this mysterious, oh no, it's gonna jump to the top left corner of the page and that's not what I want and it won't respect scrolling or resizing browsers. No, that's that's not necessarily true. This this label with with a with a class of error has absolute positioning, but that's within that little wrapper div. So we can just say, you know, th these little values here are what's are what's. Uh, let's see if I hit send. Are what's putting it right nicely up there. You know, it's just a I don't know a little shortcut, a little easier way to to place that text exactly where I wanted it. So. That's something to note in the CSS. I'm getting a little off track here, though, so let's just keep moving along. And then PHP is what powers this thing. Let's go back to the index file in the form. This is the important line here. Our form has an action that calls this PHP file contact engine.php. And this is like all this other stuff has been kind of design related. Maybe some of this validation is development related, but mostly just design and getting that Photoshop thing up on the page and looking like it should. This is where the development comes in and when it calls this PHP file that actually builds, creates, and sends that email. So uh, there's, you know, it's commented saying change the variables below. So these are the three variables that are important in this file. It's who do you want that email to appear like it's coming from? And, and two, I'm confusing myself a little bit, but um, when I, when this email is, you'd, you'd say it's from you and yeah, all right. I admit it. I'm confused a little bit because one of the two really is, the, is going to use this, this variable and we'll even see down here when it sends, <clears throat> it uses the, uh, Email from grabs it from here, and email to. Well, I know the form works, so. 
Oh, that's right. Cause it's, it's always has the same destination. It's always coming to you. So it's always email to, which you set as a variable up here. And then, and then from, you could have it, you could set it to this variable that, the variable that they put in on the contact form, or you could just make it come from a static email to, you could make it say it's come from yourself. And there's nothing really wrong with that. You'll still have the value of the email that they entered there that you can respond to, but at least this will like keep it out of your spam filter and stuff. If it looks like it's coming from you, it's not going to get spam. So that's kind of up to you there. But here's the deal. So those are the those are the variables. Uh, it, this is how it gets access to those variables. When when it calls this action, it be able to, it sets these these. Uh, wow, telephone isn't right either. That should be city, I suppose, huh? You know, we could change that though. It was probably just taken from a previous form that I had created. Yeah. I'm not even going to bother with it right now, actually, but you see what I mean. They're just variables anyway. The form works just fine. And then it makes a new a new variable called body. And you can, can you tell I'm not really a developer? Anyway, yeah, I just kind of I made this thing work because it's really easy, but I'm more of a designer than a developer. Anyway, it takes this variable body and does some formatting to it. These things are hard returns, but it, you know, this makes it look like a regular email. You don't want to just dump these variables out in an email and send it. This is at least attempting to do a little formatting of that email. And then this is the meat of this file as it calls the PHP mail function and creates it. And it sets the success as a Boolean value, like it's going to attempt to do this mail. And if it succeeds, if it succeeds, which basically if success is true, then then refresh the page to say thanks it worked, or if it you know otherwise it failed, it's going to return false. Then go to that error page. But there's not a lot to it. But this is the meat of the development portion of it. You hit send, and it comes into this file, and it actually generates and sends that email. And believe me, it works. So if you want to download this thing, and that's everything, it's all the files that make it work, all the images, even the Photoshop file itself, it's available on CSS Tricks, so you got my new fancy sidebar over here, um, and you could search for contact form, and it should be one of the more recent ones, part two, I'm calling it part two because part one was designing it. Uh, but this is this is the whole tutorial on how I sliced everything out and, and, and how different parks works and just me explaining it with words and with code that you can copy out. So that's a way you can get your hands on that and actually reading the, the print tutorial. But here in the download section, it's for now, it's right at the top two where you can hit, uh, here's the contact form section. You can hit view demo and get right to this exact one I'm using for this screencast and even download. And that will have all the files in it for your, you know, checking it out, learn it, alter it, use it on your website, do whatever you want for it. Let me know. I'd like to see how you end up using it too. That'd be cool. So. Uh, at the end, I always like to thank our special sponsor, PSD to HTML. Uh, like just in this podcast, I had a Photoshop file of that contact form. I'm actually not sure if they will make it work for you. If they'll do the PHP part, they might. But most, but they what they absolutely could do is is make that uh, file a a valid XHTML and CSS. Thing. They'll make it look like it looks anyway and send it right back to you in eight hours. You wouldn't use them for something like that. That's easy stuff, but you can make a Photoshop layout that's as, as complicated as you could ever want, and these guys will turn it into an HTML and CS website in eight hours. They do it quick, too. Each page beyond that first page is a 50% discount. They can uh, not only just make static pages like we were looking at there, but they can do dynamic stuff, too, like 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 templates for WordPress and Joomla and 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 Drupal and even e-commerce stuff like KubeCart, which I've used before. So even if you're, you know, like me and I don't have any particular problem with making, you know, HTML and CSS websites out of Photoshop stuff. What if I'm lazy? What if I have to turn something around in a day and I just don't feel like it? Well, I certainly charge a lot more than $150 to <laughs> to convert a Photoshop design, kind of depending on the client, you know. But I usually do. And uh, uh, I could just pay to have them do it and alter it and look over their code and, and, and get a, at least a great head start by doing it that way. So it's kind of like... 
<laughs> a good way out of getting some work too. So definitely check out PSD2 HTML. Until next time, see you later. Bye.